All right, here with us now, David Bonson, founder and managing partner of the Bonson Group. Good to see you, David. Good to be here. I, I know you're a big fan of Besant at Treasury. I thought it was interesting. Jason Furman there, uh, former Obama economic advisor, said the question is how much will Trump listen to best and how influential he'll be. What do you think about that? Well, you know, it's true of all presidents. I mean, they have the final say, but I think there's a lot of questions as to the tariff policy and things that are market friendly and how to navigate that. Gary Cohn navigated well at NEC. Larry Kudlow did very well. Mnuchin was very good at that. Mm. It's a tough balancing act, but I think that the president has a lot of confidence in Scott Besson that he's going to be able to kind of navigate the needs of financial markets and messaging some of the president's agenda. Mm. Can we talk about that messaging? Because some of it, they were saying why some of the notes I was reading about why they like Scott Best in the markets, at least, because he's not a total maximalist when it comes to tariffs. That instead of across the board saying 60 percent tariffs on China, one proposal he's talked about is increasing it by two and a half percent each month until you get to a 50 or a 60 percent level. Is that that moderate approach that is needed? Well, I don't want them to go incrementally and give markets uncertainty, but also I don't want to give American importers uncertainty. Two and a half until we get to a 60 level could be very destabilizing to consumers and American importers. But what it shows is a negotiating posture, which not only is, I think, uh, soon to be Secretary Besson's approach, but it's President-elect Trump's approach. According to him, he wants to use it as a negotiating tactic. So it's more moderate in that sense. Yes. We also have a pick for Secretary of Labor. We've got some sound from uh, Sean O'Brien, Teamsters president. Let's listen to that. Oh, okay. Pardon me. It's a tweet. Oh. Um, and he says, thank you at Real Donald Trump for putting American workers first by nominating Rep. Lori Chavez Dreamer for U.S. Labor mm-hmm. Secretary. Nearly a year ago, you joined us for at Teamsters Roundtable and pledged to listen to workers and find common ground to protect and respect labor in America. Now, I find this particularly interesting because Biden was supposed to be the the union president and he lost so much union support. And now they're coming over to Trump. But you have some interesting feelings about this. Yes. But my views are that it's all a great lie that the pro worker position is the pro union boss position. I believe in the working class. By the way, there's six percent of private employees that are in a union. Ninety four percent are not. She is vehemently opposed to right to work state laws. Uh, She wants to give federal employees the ability to strike and not be fired. And if President Biden or a president-elect Harris had come in and said, I have Randy Weingarten's chosen person, what would we say? Someone who supported all those closings, uh, the vax mandates, the um, AB5 in California, which I know well Mm -hmm. as a part-time California resident, that took away a lot of freedoms for independent contractors. That's who this opponent... And you bring up Weingarten because she she does support this labor pick. She was very happy with it. Okay, but talk to me about the politics of it for a second. Because Trump won the union working class vote in a way that we probably haven't seen in our lifetime. Politically, it was good for him, right? You've got a potential resumption of the dock worker strike mm-hmm. in January. You had Sean O'Brien, the Teamsters, for the first time, and I can't remember how long, not endorsing a Democrat, mm-hmm. coming very close to endorsing Republicans. So forget the economics, which are very important. Think about the politics. Is she the kind of pick that incrementally moves the working class labor farther into Trump's camp. And maybe he says, you know what? None of your union stuff. I'm, I'm putting you here to work on job training, apprenticeships, etc." What about that picture? I totally understand people who want that political narrative, but it okay. isn't reality. He had union workers before he had union bosses. Mm. The fact that Sean did not end up endorsing Harris this time around, Trump was going to win with auto workers, with rank and file. He'd been doing so well. He won Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania when he went, ran against Hillary. All those unions were on her side. The SEIU deal still vehemently came out for Harris. SEIU endorses right. this this. Uh, a pointy as well. He still did well with rank and file. Mm. The workers have brains of their own. Mm. They they don't need union bosses to tell them who to support. And in this case with the dock workers, this is a disaster waiting to happen. You cannot tell the American economy that there's one segment of the population Mm. that doesn't have to worry about technology. Technology is a benefit to all of us. Mm. They do not deserve immunity from Mm. the impact of technology. And nobody really thinks they do. Mm. One of the other sort of interesting economic issues that
that we're all facing um, is sort of the Treasury market. The bond market yeah. took a little bit of a sigh of relief today. Yields are coming down. I'm yeah. wondering if it is a Scott Besant reaction or if you're thinking about we have a debt ceiling coming due that he's going to have to be living mm-hmm. with. He's going to have to figure out how our interest costs um, servicing that is near a record. Um, instead of funding on three month short term records, which is what Janet Yellen's been doing to boost liquidity and boost the economy, he might need to go out and sort of issue debt on a longer term. All of those issues, how do you think about market reaction within the bond market for that? He might need to. He might get to. This is the thing no one talks about. Never, ever appoint an academic again to be Treasury Secretary. When did rates start going up? May of 22. From January 21 to May of 22, what was the Fed funds rate? Zero percent. 90-day T-bill rate, zero percent. The 10-year was about two percent. How much uh, term extension did Secretary Yellen give us? Former Fed chairwoman, uh, San Francisco academic PhD? Zero. Zero. Right. It's inexcusable. Scott Besson is a rate trader, a Forex guy, a currency guy. Mm. He's a financial markets guy. He's got to manage a very difficult term structure because you have $10 trillion of debt that's going to roll over and he has to manage the right optimal term structure. Candidly, I wish Secretary Mnuchin had done more with that, too, but it was difficult in 2020. He tried our 20-year bond. He, he, and, he got, and he got $20 billion sold. Yeah. You know, $20 billion <laughs> is a lot of money, but it's not a lot mm-hmm. when you have $35 trillion of debt. In 30 seconds, TikTok CEO reaching out to Elon Musk saying, hey, help me out a little bit. I got to deal with President Trump, and you seem like you're on the inside. Um, I think that uh, TikTok is probably not going to have to face what they were worried they're going to have to yeah. face. And uh, people can have different opinions about that. I'm torn because I find it deplorable and I can't stand my kids using it so much. And I also am very uncomfortable with us banning it from a federal government level. You really censor yourself on this program. I do, but I want to be very <laughs> respectful of not only the audience, but my wonderful friends here on stage. No, I love I love David Boss. We get the RPMs way up there before yeah. we downshift. It's a it's a really good interview. Great stuff. Thank Thanks you. for being with Thank us you. today. Oh.